Hi everybody, Cat here. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. It is Monday, July 29th. 43 years ago today, Lady Diana Spencer married Prince Charles. He was 33, she was just 20 years old. After a five-month engagement, having meeting up only 13, times during that span of months they married at Westminster Abbey the service conducted by Robert Runcy Archbishop of Canterbury quoting from his his speech here is the stuff of which fairy tales are made a prince and a princess on their wedding day now did these words signal his personal feelings about the wedding itself? Uh, some now say that he saw the, real, the result, reality of the union and knew that the wedding was a sham. Basically, we've all come to understand with the connivings in the background, it really was pretty much an arranged marriage of the day cooked up between um, the Queen Mother and uh, Diana's grandmother, and they were they were good friends. Now, let's face it. Both Charles and Diana knew by the time that they married, by the time that they were walking down the aisle, that it was a mistake. But it was too late. Neither one of them had the courage to stand up and say, "That this isn't it." You see. Charles was under pressure, he felt anyway, from Prince Philip that he had to settle down and he had to marry. Diana was so caught up with it. And, you know, who wouldn't want, you know, marry a prince? Of course she wanted to. She was in love with love. She'd come from a sheltered yet shattered childhood so she was looking for love and she thought, you know, here we go, Prince Charming going to sweep her off her feet happily ever after. She believed in the fairy tale at the time, even, you know, when she realized it wasn't going to wasn't going to work. She describes that day as the worst day of her life and the best day of her life, you know, and. Like, by 1986, and they're five years into the wedding, the press knew it was, for all purposes, you know, done. It was ended. But, you know, they knew it, but they played the game, went along with the narrative until 1992, where the truth just couldn't be contained any longer. You know, the backbiting and gaslighting and manipulation that characterized the state of their union accelerated until their divorce in 1996. And then it was just merely a year and I think a month later and Diana was dead. And some would say under very suspicious circumstances. Now, during her time in the royal family, and indeed afterward, Diana did strive to use her fame for the good of the downtrodden. Unbelievably, at the time, that created jealousy within members of the royal family. I mean, Charles was jealous of her. Anne was jealous of her. Um, you know, because sort of the unwritten rule is you never outdo the monarch. You never outdo someone whose position is higher than than yours, you know. And even though she was a great asset to the royal family, they saw her as a threat from the beginning, you know. And like Diana had her flaws, she sure did. But in spite of that, and perhaps because of it, she gained the love and the loyalty of the public all around the world. That lasts up until today, all these decades later, you know. Um, she's going to go down in the history books. She was one of a kind. There's never going to be another one. 
And, uh, you know, it's good. It's a good thing to look back every now and again and reflect on events and how they've shaped things happening today. Interesting stuff. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, share my videos, and leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you're thinking. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.